we have here four models of carbon in its elemental form. So let me take you through a quick tour of these models. This model here is the diamond structure. Carbon is all sp3 hybridized and singly bonded to other car carbons in tetrahedral geometries. And you can see that the, the red lines here make the shape of a cube. This is because uh, diamond has a cubic unit cell, that repeating unit. Um, and again, these are all singly bonded. Diamond does not tend to conduct electricity. And I have a very, very inexpensive diamond here, which uh, has so many flaws in it, it's, it's practically black. Okay. And I'll move on to a model of another form of carbon, and this is carbon in its graphite form. And you can see that instead of being that sort of three-dimensional uh, structure bonds seem to be going higgledy-piggledy everywhere, you can see that uh, here carbon is arranged in layers. Okay, and three layers are shown here. Um, what we have here is in each layer we have sp2 hybridization and the carbons are bonded in a trigonal planar geometry to other carbons in these sort of hexagon rings that are all sort of fused together in each of these sheets and the p orbitals uh, of, uh, that are not involved in the hybridization that come from the carbon stick out in and out of the plane of the graphite layers and uh, this enables this helps enable graphite to actually be a pretty good conductor of electricity and whereas diamond has this again uh, bonding arrangement where there's there's bonds 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 all over the place diamond tends to be a very hard material graphite on the other hand tends to be very soft because there is really actually very weak interactions between these sheets of carbon and so these graphite layers can actually slide past each other pretty readily which is why graphite can sometimes be used as a lubricant and why it's used in pencils um, here's a sample of some graphite powder okay now uh, a single layer of this graphite type material is called graphene. Several years ago, uh, people were able to finally isolate single layers of graphene, and this is of great interest because these layers will conduct electricity, and so it is potentially possible that we can make circuits from graphene that are only one atom thick, so and make very, very tiny structures, nanoscale structures. And there are other nanoscale structures that have been explored. Here's a model of a portion of a carbon nanotube. Okay, they, are, they come in a variety of different sizes. This is actually a model of one of the smaller diameter carbon nanotubes that have been discovered. But yeah, you can think about the structure going on in this direction and on in this direction. And we can kind of think of this carbon nanotube is sort of being a rolled up graphene layer. You see we have all of these hexagons all fused together in one sheet. If we were to roll that sheet up we would get something like this. And some of these carbon nanotubes can, uh, are good conductors of electricity, some of them are semiconductors. They vary in their conductivity in terms of how the atoms are bonded together. This is just one possible way Carbon atoms can be bonded together in nanotubes. Um, they are all sp2 hybridized carbons, but um, instead of having these rings arranged like this, they can actually be twisted a little bit, in, and they're still hexagon rings, twisted a little bit. Some of these carbon nanotubes actually have some chirality to it. So carbon nanotube chemistry can be very complicated. Um, we do have some carbon nanotubes here in this vial. Uh, they're kind of stuck to the wall of the vial. Having worked with them out of the vial, I can say that 
Um, some of these carbon nanotubes can be very fluffy and very easily blown about in air currents. Now, there's another carbon nanostructure I want to show you as well, and this is the model of a simple fullerene. Okay. Um, it's called fullerene because uh, the people who discovered the, this, these type of structures thought these looked like the geodesic domes that were uh, attributed to our Buckminster Fuller. And so they are called Buckminster Fullerenes, they're called Fullerenes, they're sometimes called Buckyballs. And you can see that this particular one, this carbon-60 molecule, has 60 carbon atoms and it's, it's spherical and the uh, arrangement of bonds in these sp2 hybridized carbons are actually match the seams that you would see in many soccer balls and you can see we have hexagons like we saw for the graphite graphene and carbon nanotubes but we also have pentagons so one of the ways you could think about this is sort of like taking a sheet of graphene and sort of rolling it up into a ball, but in the process of making the ball, um, there are some five-membered rings in addition to the six-membered rings. Okay, and again, this is a spherical structure. It's uh, in, it got some interesting chemistry. It it can absorb electrons and give off electrons, so it can be made into either both a cation and an anion. Um, but again, this is another one of the carbons in sp2 hybridization with trigonoplanar geometries. So uh, what we have here is a vial with a few carbon-60 crystals kind of along the walls of the vial. There are other fullerene structures. There's C70 and there are other structures that have uh, even more carbon atoms, but C60 is probably the most famous because of its, uh, in part, because of its wonderful spherical symmetry. So of these models, I wanted to point out that only one model, one structure represented by these models, has sp3 hybridized carbon, and that's diamond. The other models, the other structures represented by these models all have sp2 hybridized carbon.